Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Art and I are with the fabulous John Mariani, the publisher and uh, lead writer for the um, Virtual Gourmet, free, mag free um, newsletter, by the way, great ma newsletter. But he's also an author of over 12 books and uh, writer for New York Magazine, Bloomberg News, Forbes, and many other delicious little tidbits. John, good to see you. Good to be back. You, you know, John, you know, a simple hello would have been hello. Everybody knows John Mariani. They can look up his credits. You didn't you left out a ton of stuff about how brilliant he is in other areas that he's a radio personality. I mean, John, if you're gonna if you're gonna, you know, try to make nice with him, you know, fill him in. And in his newsletter, he's got a serialized book. Okay, that I, I find fascinating uh, because it just got touches of the kind of class, the Jane Bondish class, class and stuff like <laughs> that, that you don't normally get when you read a, a blog. So anyway, given all that, totally unrelated, uh, but because I know that, that John has sort of been, uh, as all of us have been sort of limited in the way we have been traveling over the last few years, um, we've started um, with our holiday season, having people fly in and us driving over 50 miles or going to places. So sort of travel is making a comeback. Uh, is that something that you're seeing, Mr. Mariani? Absolutely, positively. Um, I have not been on an airplane that has not been 100% full. I have not been at a restaurant that has not been 100% full. Uh, yesterday, I drove into New York City against my better judgment um, and found that in Midtown, um, a, a usual trek for me from my house into Midtown is 45 minutes. Last night, it was an hour and a half, half an hour wow. to try to find parking, hour and a half to get home. Um, hundreds of thousands of people at 1030 at night crossing the wrong way. Um, et cetera. And I suspect that's true everywhere. As I, I just got back from from Italy, where I was in Puglia, which used to be pretty desolate. That's the heel of, uh, we can talk about that in the future. Um, that's the heel of, of Italy. And even that in the last five years, not overrun with tourists, but it's doing very, very well. And the restaurants there are full. One night went to a restaurant. There's nobody in the place at 8 30, 9 o'clock. By the time I left at 10 o'clock, you couldn't get a couldn't get a seat in the place. Uh, wow. it's just everywhere. And this means long, long security lines. Um, if you don't have TSA clearance or um, getting into the United States, a global entry or um, at the it, where it's possible to domestically clear. Uh, if you don't have those things, just the idea of going to the airport uh, three hours is minimal amount of time that I would recommend. As a matter of fact, when we were going to Italy, we got there two hours in advance and we went up to the counter to get our, put our tickets and baggage. And he said, is there anybody on this flight? There was literally nobody at the counter. And they said, oh, they all got on half an hour ago. You're the last. Wow. So, um, it's it's become abominable, and you know, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and Happy Happy Hanukkah and everything. And I'm glad everybody's going to visit their 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 families. And I'm very happy that people are traveling again. But it ain't pretty out there. And um, I vowed last night that I'm not going back into New York City until after January 1st because uh, I haven't that many lives left uh, to waste. And boy, you know, I like to think that I'm. No, I, I know I'm not a patient man, but I don't like to curse a lot. But last night I was lifting the top off my Hyundai SUV with my scurrilous language at everybody from the guy in front of me to the crowds of people crossing against the light to the Chinese uh, delivery guys on scooters. It was not a good night for my blood pressure. <laughs> wow. So is this the new normal for travel then? I think it is because. Uh, despite some, no longer all, predictions that we have a terrible economy, we're about to go into a recession, the stock market's falling, everything is terrible out with the, the economy. Uh, the fact is that the economy is booming. People yeah. make more money, 
They can have their pick of jobs and demand what they want. Um, it looks like we may not slide into a recession. The stock market just wacky, but we're still, you know, at this point, 34,000 mm -hmm. up. Um, and I can't speak for Europe, uh, where things are uh, not quite as rosy, but um, things are good and people have the money. I mean, at Disney World, for instance, their restaurants cost about what the better or best restaurants in the United States would cost. Their highest priced restaurant, Victoria and Albert, is $425, $425. It is booked at least six months in advance. Wow. And I could not get a table there except for calling in to a friend I knew at, at Walt Disney World. And they said, could you come on December 1st? I said, yeah, I can. He said, because that's the first time we have a table. And then they said, would you like to dine in the kitchen and watch the food made? And I said, I really wouldn't. I've done that before. And I want to see how the ambiances in the dining room said, oh, um, all 52 seats are taken tonight and have been for weeks. But... Mm, they coax uh, a, an anniversary couple into the kitchen who thought it was just the bees needs to dine in there. So we got that table. I mean, this is, it's crazy. And every single other restaurant in uh, Disney was packed. Now this is the so-called downtime, uh, the slow time in Disney. Uh, this is the Orlando one, not, not where you guys are, but I'm sure it's quite the same. And the waits on lines, uh, a, a, a small wait, for any of the more popular rides was 65 minutes. Um, I wait for the newest, most exciting rides, the Avatar ride and stuff, four hours online. Yeah, that's Ten like the old Disney. You can buy what's called Lightning Pass, which you better do, and it's worth every penny. It's, it's like $15 extra per day. Yeah. And you can cut through those lines considerably, but I mean... <laughs> It's just, and you know what Disney costs. I mean, Disney is no longer $50 for the day. Um, right. Anybody who goes to Disney World or Disneyland is uh, at hotels, restaurants, and so for a family of four is going to spend five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. So yeah. um, it didn't look like the people who were there, um, who were, you know, in cut off jeans and cut off, um, cut off t shirts and gimme caps worn backwards, they didn't look like $5,000. Uh, uh, quartets, but um, oh, they saved all their lives. Well, no, they were they, they waiting for COVID to be over. Mm. And, um, and COVID has spurred all of this, but it's not going to stop as good as, as as good as the economy is, and it's probably going to get better next year. Um, I mean, gas prices are down to three bucks a gallon. Hello, wow. uh, not on the west coast, but yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's three, it's here where I live. It's about three fifty, three forty nine, but it's dropping. But in other places, uh, it is at three dollars and dropping. Uh, still, that's better than four dollars and fifty cents, which it you was bet. six six weeks you ago. Um, so all those things are good. Prices are up for hotels. Prices are up for food. Uh, prices are up across the board, which they have to do because they're paying their. <laughs> staff more to be there they can't find staff so they're willing to pay uh high and i think people feel very generous about tipping and and elsewhere but uh it's great out there it really really is great so far as uh making money hand over fist uh and spending it in very happy ways um but boy uh, i'm i don't much like it getting on a plane that's 100 percent full and we've talked in prior shows about business class versus economy, and uh, economy has just become a, a, a torture to uh, travel. Um, two, I mean, two hours for me to Disney is fine. You watch a movie and you're there. But um, if you're traveling five hours for me to Los Angeles or Hawaii or something, it's just impossible. And, uh, and since uh, as I said before that to fly to Paris or London or Rome is going to cost you six to seven thousand dollars in business. But business is business is all full, too. Yeah, you know, you while you're commenting on travel, uh, John, uh, I'm beginning to notice a phenomenon. And I don't know whether or not you have as well that uh, well, COVID is certainly not over. And other things like the, we have flu season, we've got all sorts of respiratory things. Uh, that are, people are now particularly more vulnerable because they haven't been exposed and getting some kinds of immunity to them over the years, even though they're still getting shots. I'm finding now that people are traveling 
uh, especially people who've been fully vaccinated, they're expecting to get COVID or sick and that it's, you know, they'll have to deal with it. They're not going to die. They assume they're not going to die from it. They're, you know, they've been vaccinated. They've got these uh, medications they can take. But I'm seeing all over the place sort of nonchalant. You know, I just uh, traveled to Canada, came back, and on my way back, I quarantined myself in a hotel for three days because I caught COVID. These are people who are triple boosted. Or I saw another Facebook post saying we had a wonderful holiday party. I think this is over Thanksgiving, uh, but it was a COVID spreader. So eight of the 16 people, okay, had COVID, yet they recover from it and then they go on with their life four or five days later. Have you noticed uh, sort of like a, uh, a a sense of people traveling and saying, you know what, if I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it, and I just deal with it? Well, there's a, there's a dual fatalism. Um, what you just said is completely true. And let's face it, a year ago, it was not completely true. And people were terrified. Uh, and before there was a vaccine, uh, rather uh, the shots and vaccine and then the boosters, um, people were dying like, like one million Americans died. My cousin and his wife died in the first week that COVID hit because there wasn't anything. OK, it was a very serious illness not to be downplayed. Now, because the wonders of modern science, what you just said, Art, is that you become a fatalistic, as I did. Everybody in my family got COVID, so I assumed I was going to. Not one of them had anything more than the sniffles. Um, I didn't even have the sniffles. I was just coughing my brains out for three or four days. Um, so that's one fatalistic aspect. The other is that a lot of people say, you know, I'm not going to live forever. I've been sitting around with my feet up on the couch and and, and, uh, and sweatpants for two years. Uh, I am going to go. I'm going to go do it. Maybe this will be my last vacation ever, but I'm going to do it. and I'm going to spend some big bucks on it, which is yeah. my philosophy of life for my entire life. <laughs> hey, one last question before we go, John, and that is about uh, Europe and the exchange rate. Um, is are prices good in Europe for Americans at this time? Mm, the euro, one dollar to one euro. Wow. That, uh, in Italy a year ago, it was a dollar twenty, you know, and now I was there and it was a dollar. So everything on the menu that was uh, 40 euros was 40 bucks or, or even less. And um, so that's great. And the pound is about a dollar twelve. The pound was up to a dollar fifty, a dollar seventy at one point. I mean, give me a break. I'm going to visit London, but now it's it's almost a parody. It's uh, terrific. Interesting. Great information. Thank you, John. And I, I'm sure most of us are going to be traveling again, if not for the holidays now, um, this year, this coming year. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.